if possible they should put the they should open the uh, YouTube channel and let all members who are not here to watch because um, there's news going around that there's going to be a high rains so people should take here so I'm sure some will want to come but whatever be the reason but thank God you are here can I hear you your amen is not good at all how many of us love prayer 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 oh how many of you like it but if we which prayer will be taken out of the whole thing which prayer will not be part of church you are you are okay how many of you don't like prayer as how many of you like prayer didn't lift up your hands how many of you wish you'd be taken out you didn't lift your hands how many of you don't like prayer you didn't lift up your hands so which category do you belong to where you are looking at me which category do you belong to One of the most frustrating things I've seen is when people pray and they don't get answers. It can be so frustrating that you could decide not to pray again. Because life is such that whatever you do and you get answers, you always want to keep doing it. Right? So when you don't get answers, then it's like, why should I even do it? But then you should also then know that when prayer is not being answered, there could be a reason. Like, some of the reasons in the Bible, if you are not careful, you will never see it. Like, let me give you an example of if you work with people and you don't treat them well, Instead of paying their salary, you are using it to chill. <laughs> Your prayer and fasting is useless before God. How? So let's look at Isaiah 58. And let's look at verse number 3. I've started, so don't worry. 3. I wish we had the message Bible for that. So let's look at this scripture. Let's read together. But they also complain. Why do we fast and we don't look and you don't look our way? Why do we humble ourselves and you don't even notice? Well, here is why. The bottom line of your fast is this prophet. You drive your employees too hard. Wait a minute. How can somebody putting too much pressure on his workers. Stop God from answering your fasting and prayer. Over, can we have another version? NLT, then NIV, then overburdening people. You see, the burden you put on people's neck that you, you will not do. You, you, you won't do it. But you will want others to do it. Could hinder you from having answers to your prayers. What did the person say? Ask someone, what do you want God to do for you? Okay. The next one, why God doesn't answer our prayers is because of sin. I'll give you two areas of sin. Um, and I'll progress on this sin area. Isaiah 59 verse 1. Can I hear a bit of the keyboard? Okay, let's read. Go. I can't hear you. Behold, the hand is not what? But that it cannot save. 
nor his <laughs> on heavy, that he cannot what? Hear. Two. But your iniquities have separated you from God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear you. That's why David the psalmist said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord God will not hear me. Now, there is a big difference between sin, iniquity, and transgression. We all sin. But iniquity is when you know you are doing it and you know it will not help you and you are still doing it. Transgression is when I don't care what can come, can come. Or die, be die. She said, so if you look at David's confession in Psalm 51 he, he, he used all the three to talk to God sin, iniquity and transgression and can I have the psalm that said that if I regard or if I see iniquity in my heart give me the N, um, NLT let's read this one if I regard iniquity in my heart the Lord God will not hear me Now look at it. The way regard, look at it. This is what I want to explain if I go. If I had not confessed the sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. So, in other words, I would say that much as we all sin, one of the things you can, that can really hinder prayer is what we call unconfessed sin. What did I say? I didn't hear you. What is it? I didn't hear you. Yeah. So you must be able to confess your sins to God so that your prayers will be answered. Can I hear an amen? Hey, this your amen is sick. I've given how many points so far? Eh? Four. How many more do you want? When you take the word of God lightly, you are in the different what God says. Okay, now let me look at this scripture first. Um, when there's so much to say, that's what happens. Okay, when you neglect God's word, let me move on. Proverbs 28 verse 9. Proverbs 28 verse 9. You see, if you don't take the word of God serious, it's actually I've said delight. You know, let me deal with this one for read. One who turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. Can I have another version? Another version, please. Read. God detests the prayers of a person who ignores the law. I've seen, I've seen people sometimes, you tell them, do this, they won't do it. But they want answers. Get it done this way. No, they won't do the what you are telling them to do. But as for the answer, they want it. Am I talking to somebody here? Now, can I have a message Bible to this? <laughs> listen, go. God has no use for the prayers of the people who won't listen to Him. Now, I'm giving you all this because you should be able to say that I prayed for one million dollars. I should have it, right? If I'm not having it, why? Then I can use, look at these margins. 
and begin to measure yourself and say, that, why is it that I'm not having it? Please, are, are somebody hearing me? Read this one very well. And I think it's good for my status. I'm going to put it there. God has no use for the prayers. So, Aquana Bompa is six hours. Have you done what I've told you to do? There are people who will do what God has told them to do and might not pray and will get miracles very fast. Am I teaching something here? Hello? Look at somebody and say, are you here? You've gone home. The next one, which is very common, Ephesians 4, 32. Okay, give me Matthew 18, 21 and 22. It says, it's when you don't forgive a fellow Christian or a fellow brother or sister. Matthew 18, 21, 22. Let's read. Then Peter came to me and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sit against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times. Verse 22. Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. Now, the funny thing is that 70 times 7 is 490. Right? Now, so someone will say that 490, 365 is one year. Right? So I'll give you one year, let's say six months. If I give you one year, six months, and you keep doing what you are doing, I won't forgive you again because the Bible says 70 times what? 70. But Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32 says something. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgive one another, even as God in Christ has what? Forgiven you. Now, if you read on, you will know that, let me tell you the story because I don't have time. The Bible talks about a man who owed God a sin and God forgave him. And he went to his brother who was owing him sin and he chose not to forgive. And what happened next was that the person went to God and said, God help me. And God was saying, I can't help you because somebody is owing you. So they brought a person together and they sat down and God said, forgive this brother so that me too, I can have mercy on him. He said, no, I won't forgive. Then God also said, if you won't forgive, then finish. You to all the sins you have against you, I bring it against you. And then God put him in prison. That's a parable Jesus gave, but I'm just giving it straightforward. And that asked the people in the prison to torment him until he's ready to pay the debt. Now the funny thing is that if the Bible goes on to, give me verse 30 of Ephesians 4. Thirty. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, or we have seen for the day of redemption. Let all what bitterness. The next verse say bitterness. Some say bitterness. Yeah, bitterness is a process, proceed of unforgiveness. So if you have really forgiven, even three hundred sixty-five in a year, by the time the year ends, the person's sin should have been cleared. And a new life should have begun, or it's not true. But if you still were able to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and get to the 490, you are a bitter person. And in that case, if you're a bitter person, you are put in what we call a spiritual kind of prison. And that prison, it is not the devil who has put you there, it is God Himself. Who has allowed he, he doesn't put you there he has moved himself away and he like god moved away from jesus and was nailed to the cross and jesus said my god my god why is that forsaking me so when he moved away like the holy spirit left saul and an evil spirit tormented saul so all god needs to do 
when you are bitter is to move away from you. And when he moves away from you, the next thing that happens is that you are put in a kind of spiritual prison. And can you imagine that you are praying? I find every witch that is fighting me or the demons in my house that are not, they will laugh at you because they are not the ones who put you there. Your boss that you are praying to is the one who says be there. And he has even given them permission to torment you until you are ready to change. Ephesians, no. First Corinthians chapter 13 says that love does not keep record of wrongs. So a person who keeps record of wrongs does not have love. And if you don't have love, first you'll say anybody does not have love does not have the father in him. And can I go on to say this? As long as we are human beings, we will hurt each other. Expect it. So, even God hurt Lucifer, through of us. That's why he rebelled. <laughs> Jesus hurt Judas. That's why he rebelled. Today, someone asked me a very serious question. And the person had to make me crack my head. He asked me a question. Who prepared the last supper for Jesus? <laughs> you can answer me. I got it for her. Who prepared? There were two people. Who can tell me the answer? Who oh, can give me the answer? Eh? Zacchaeus. <laughs> Forget it. Ah, it's Peter and John. I should give you a scripture for it. Eh? Eh? You believe it? No, you don't believe it. Let me take my. I want to ask me the question. I said, hey, I some pan with some of you. To be very frank, the first answer I gave was that it's not in the Bible. The Holy Ghost said, hey, I have it. So I have to go and check it again. So Luke 22, 7 to 10. Then came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. Eight. And he sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare the Passover for us that we may eat. <laughs> I should have used it for a quiz for 50 cities. <laughs> It's only Luke that gave the name. The others did not give. If you read the Mark, Mark, is it Mark 14? He just said he sent two of the disciples. Mark 14, 13. He just sent, if you read the Matthew 20, and he sent two of his disciples and said, and go into the city and a man will meet you carrying a picture or follow him. And then, let's go. He sent out his two disciples and said, go, go. That's 14, please. Moreover, he goes in, say to the, the master of need, where the your scream is which I may eat the Passover with my disciples. So, but it's only Luke who mentioned the name. So let's move on. That is something maybe you can put it in your coat of gym somewhere and use it to bring somebody's face. Or oh, it's not possible. If you meet someone says who knows the Bible very well, who prepared the last supper? <laughs> Okay, so back to where was I? So a lot of us are in bondage, not because God has put us in bondage, or not because the devil is powerful, but unforgiveness, bitterness is a sin that keeps us in bondage. And I'll say this, that bitterness is a weapon that is not straight towards your enemy, but it's straight towards you yourself. It's like pointing a gun to your own head and telling somebody that will kill you. Look at somebody and say, uh, are you okay with this one? 
what the person say yeah uh-huh. look at someone say who are you not talking to oh god if you give me a husband i will praise your name your last boyfriend when then you find Okay, so that will bring me to the next one. When you are offended with another believer, your prayers will not be answered. Your your Matthew 5, 23 and 24 is not just your prayer, even your gifts, your service, everything you offer to God is not accepted. can see somebody who is busy surfing are still poor. It's always in church doing things for God but nothing is working. I've taught you this before but let's really go. Therefore if you I want to hear you go but if you what? Hmm? I can't hear you. Oh, let's go again. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and then remember that FD Yali has something against you, leave your protocol there before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer the gift. Hey, look at somebody and say, Are you fine? Look at somebody and say, Are you fine with somebody? What the person say? The next one that hinders prayer is when you are not matured for what you are asking for. Galatians chapter 4. When you are not matured for what you are asking for. You can't ask God to give you a thing you don't have the capacity to handle. Actually, the Bible said that, okay, now I say that a hair, as long as he's a child, does not differ from a slave, though he's a master of all, but he's kept under verse 2, he's kept by his under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by their father. So you've asked God, God, give me a car, and you don't know how to drive. That car will kill you. Actually, where you are staying, if God gives you a car, your landlord will eject you. You have to sleep in the car. Because the way, when you came, the way you prayed and begged the landlord and he gave you the veranda to sleep and he's not charging you rent. And if he gets to see the car you are driving, I don't know if you know that the landlord will not be happy with you at all. <laughs> Sometimes people rent a house and when they rent a house, the next moment, they put AC everywhere. The landlord would not talk. Then they, they buy cars in the house. So that the floor here, they tell you that rent has increased. Is it true? It's not true. You're like, oh, last year I charged you hundreds. How can they come to go to thousand five? Yes, sir. It even shows that my house is a good luck house. Since you keep you are prospering. So when God wants to also bless you. He makes sure that you have built the capacity for it. You see, for us to build this building, the capacity has always been there. But we couldn't build it because we had not matured to get it. So the Bible said, God said to Jeremiah, when you were born in your mother's womb, I ordained you as a prophet. He was a prophet already. He didn't grow to become a prophet. A child is born, a lady especially, with a womb that would develop as the child keeps growing. Are you understanding me? So, it's there and you must keep eating and eating and breathing in and going to the normal lifestyle, drinking water and then growing so you can get it. So, there are certain things you ask God. If he has not, he's not giving it to you, it means you don't have the capacity. Now, especially, I've seen this thing in 
the moves of God. Most people who pray for revival became the killers of revival. <laughs> Samuel um, early prayed for revival for his children to change. They were not changing. God had to raise Samuel. They didn't use his own children. So the moves of God like Martin Luther who came in with the judge shall live by faith. I mean the, the church then was praying for revival. But when God didn't use them because he don't have the capacity. Let me give you an example that if we pray for God to bring bridge a revival and God brings a revival and we need to do 40 days fasting and prayer. God will not give the anointing to somebody who can't fast 12, 6 to 12. <laughs> I'm not lying to you. 6 to 12 can't fast. He not use you for the revival. You pray for it. He has heard you. But somebody else. It will shock you that Anne Na and Simon prayed for the birth of Jesus, but it was not their children or their womb that were used. At least, <laughs> the woman should have been the one to carry the Messiah. They, they were not virgins. They didn't have that kind of character. They were not from that background. God, yes, you prayed it, but do you have the capacity to handle it? Uh, am I talking to somebody here at all? Oh, you are not here. So sometimes we pray for breakthroughs. Let me give an example. Oh Lord, let us have favor. Lord, favor in this church, favor in this church. Let open doors for this church that we are here. The presence, I need a special aid who can write proposals for me for all my developments. Okay, who, who here can write? That is where you realize that you might have to go and look for someone who even never attended the prayer meeting. It's not true to write it. Because even though you prayed it, you don't have the capacity. The president said, I don't know, but I need someone who can sew three-piece suit for me to all my suits. Who here can sew three-piece suit? I hear how. You say, man of God, that's in the president want African way. No, he said three-piece suit. Are you here with me? Oh, am I talking to somebody here at all? Okay, right now, they come and ask now, can say that God has spoken to them and she give them a footballer. <laughs> who? who? Foot, Richard. <laughs> Maybe me and Pastor Victor will go and try. <laughs> Maybe God will say, please, this is not prayer, it's sound fixing. Move away. <laughs> If we try to go there because we prayed and we are pastors, we will be sacked and we will think that God has not answered the prayer and we will be embarrassed. Or is it true or is it not true? We are so embarrassed. The president comes and says, I need a translator. I need a translator to Spanish. Yes, who can do it here? Samapa. That's when you realize that all of a sudden your, your brain starts roaming. So we can pray that God, how many points have I given so far? How many? Eight. Let me add the last one. You can, you can be very prayerful for a thing, but if you are not careful, you and God release the capacity to somebody else. You will hate the person. But if you are wise, you will connect to the person that God is using. Maybe you'll be the one to even introduce the person that you handle this for me. I want to give you an opportunity. So I handle it on my behalf. Why? Because you have to give it to people who are more matured because you can handle. Then the next one is prayerlessness in itself. If you don't pray, you can't have answers. First Samuel 12, 23. Moreover, as for me, far be it from me that I shall sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. If you cease to pray for your leaders, your pastor, you are a sinner. 
Not praying is a sin. Actually, I have, I have, I don't know where, but in one of my books, I've forgotten who I said, anybody who doesn't pray is proud. When you don't pray, what you are simply saying that I can take care of myself. I'm strong by myself. I don't need anybody. I'm a God all by myself. So let's read this scripture. Go, moreover, as for me, far be it from me that I shall sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. But I'll teach you the good and the right way. Samuel saw it like a sin. He doesn't pray for the church. Now give me NLT for this. So it, whenever you see that you are being prayerless, let me tell you, all major sin comes from prayerlessness and not reading your Bible. So anytime you see that you are not praying, you are not reading your Bible, you should know that very soon you are going to enter into deep sin. No, deep shit. So let's read this one. As for me, I will certainly not sin against the Lord by ending my prayers for you, and I will continue to teach you what God, good, what is good and right. Why was the prophet Samuel saying this? Because it's simple. God, I repeat it, God can never intervene in the affairs of man until man decides to pray. And Matthew 16 and Matthew 18 says that whatsoever you bind on earth, is bound in heaven. And whatsoever you lose on earth is loose in heaven. So, and it's not God who is coming to lose it on earth. Heaven is waiting for the decision of man to make the decisions. Matthew, is it Matthew 18, 18? Look at someone and say, are you sinning because you are not praying? Amy, have you prayed one hour today? One hour. Two hours. Abrampa, how many? One hour today. You are a sinner. So, you see, a sinner, you can be looking at somebody for being a witch, fornicating, stealing, and say, this is a sinner. But in the spiritual realm, you two are a sinner. So let's read this. Go. As surely I said, whatever you bind on, no, you bind in heaven. Whatever you bind on, whatever you bind on, are we on earth? Whatever you bind on will be bound in, and whatever you lose on earth will be loose in heaven. So if you are not binding anything on earth, the spiritual realm, nothing is happening there for you. So people think that people say what can come can come. Well, I have, I, have, I have this message too. I know what I say. Nothing just happens. Everything that happens on earth is because of human activity on earth. You see, I'm not you saw that it rained. Do you know why it never rained until man began to till the earth? Genesis two five b. Because it's the activities of earth that provokes rain. When we are burning things, the dust of the earth is the activity of earth that releases dust and things in the heavens that comes together to bring rain. So when there are no activities on earth, there will not be rain. So God made it in that way. You cannot be there and just become pregnant. It's not possible. Even Mary, he was not just there. There was intercourse with the Holy Ghost. And that is why I always say that don't tell me that if you have a dream that somebody is sleeping with you, you don't get fibroid. Because how did Mary get pregnant with an angel or with a spirit? And you two are having dreams somebody is sleeping with you. The end result. <laughs> are you with me here? So look at somebody and say, whatever activity takes place on earth is what brings rain on earth. I didn't hear you. 
So when your earth is silent, your heavens will be silent. Okay, so I've given you how many points so far for lack of answers to prayer. How many? How many? Nine. It's okay. Number one. Number one. Hey. Richard, number one. Hey. You have three. I didn't hear you. You are here, number four. <laughs> Is it possible for them to put all the nine on the screen for me? Without the scriptures. Look at someone say, any activity on earth will bring an activity from heaven. So I've been telling you something um, that we are we have, June is a portal opening. And I myself, I've seen it and I'm not supposed to talk on some of them, so I'm not talking. But it's, there are a lot of openings taking place. Now, if you look at Zechariah chapter 10, when the seasons come for rain, there are certain things you must also do. Give me Zechariah chapter 10. Ask ye the Lord. Okay, take me there first. Okay, read. Ask the Lord for rain in the, in the time of the what? Latter rain. Something latter rain. Now, in the... In the in the Hebrew calendar, there is a former and the latter rain. There's a first rainfall, like Ghana. First rainfall and then the second rainfall. But the second rainfall is heavier than the first rainfall. But God is saying that even with the rainfall, don't just expect it if you don't pray for it. And he said, in the time of... So, in the spiritual realm, there are times that the heavens open and if you are smart and you know the time then you ask for it failure to ask for it you can't blame anybody if you don't have it okay i'm saying this in toast in toast in toast in toast in toast in toast you had in toast passing you didn't say anything cabbage 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 you say cabbage for your heart you you didn't say anything Bread, 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 bread. You didn't say, egg, 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 egg. Now you wake up in the afternoon. You feel for a sandwich. That is when you remember that. Ah! I don't know what I'm talking about here. It came. And sometimes your appetite will not tell you you need it till the tail is passed. So, if you know what you want, what he had bread, the next thing you are waiting for is what? You know your ingredients. Oh, please, I'm not talking to somebody here at all. You know, you are not here. So, if a prophet says that God is opening certain portals in a certain season, that is the time for you to say that I want to ask God for this. It's the time to have half night, all night, midday, whatever. Why? Because it's a season. It's a season. And that season will pass. And when that season passes, if you didn't do anything about the season, you have to wait for the next season. When the Jews prayed that God, they were hungry. God had to bring them food from heaven. And they call that food manna. Who knows the meaning of the word manna, the food manna? What is this? That's the meaning. Like God gives you someone that teach about it. It's, you ask them, what is it then? They didn't even see. They prayed for it. It came. And then people gathered. And God told them, this is the rule of the manna. Every day, gather what you can eat. Don't take more than what you need. Then during weekends, gather for the weekend. That we can gather for. People who carried, people are so greedy. They carried manna bottle 
to their house. By morning, it has turned to maggot. Greed. But when it got to the season where you can carry more than for one day, and they carried it overnight, it didn't turn to maggot. Why? Because that was the season for it. Please, I'm not talking to somebody here at all. Are, are you here with me at all? Now, so, in this season, he says, I see the Lord reign in the what? In the time of the word. And what will be the sign? The Lord will make what? Flashing clouds and will give them showers of rain. Grass in every field for everyone. Verse 2. Verse 2. There's verse 2 there. For the idols speak delusion. Their divineness and vision lies. And they tell false dreams. They are false dreams. Dreams that are not of God. They comfort in vain. Therefore, the people went their way like sheep. They are in trouble because there is no shepherd. Are you with me? Give me verse 3. My anger is kind against the shepherds, and I will punish the goat heads. For the Lord of hosts will visit the flock, the house, of, and will make them as his royal house in the battle. So God said, I'm going to visit. Now, if God said, I'm going to visit my people, God can never visit his people without man giving him permission. So, in my book, I said that whenever man pray, God, deliver me, deliver me, deliver me. Israel, God, deliver us, deliver us, deliver us. What did God give? Moses, a man. It wasn't an angel. It was a man. Daniel chapter 9. Daniel was reading. He was working in the palace. And whilst Daniel chapter 9. Whilst he was in the palace, he decided to read the book of Jeremiah. Like you are reading palace protocol. Or this is my book, and I'm going to towards the title Destiny in Defense. Take charge of your destiny, Miami book. So, in the first year of Dairos, the son of Hyzeros, of the new maid who was made king over the realms of the Chaldeans, two, let's go. In the first year of I, Daniel, read, I understood by the books. Wait a minute. There is one of the things people struggle to do, which I don't struggle to do, is that sometimes we want, we are there, and a, a man of God will come to us and say that, I can see that you are breaking through. Sometimes, you don't need that. When you are reading a book, and a revelation comes to you straight, it's a season. You didn't understand what I just said. I remember in my, in my wilderness years, when we were in Malam, I got, I struggled, but I got TBN. And in TBN, there was a program they did called Praise the Lord. I don't know whether they still do it. And they brought men of God to come and preach and whatever. And my wife would tell you that when they were preaching, I took it like I was in a church service. They say, in the next 10 days, God is about to visit you. I tell my wife, 10 days, miracle over. I said, ah. Did a man speak to you? I said, they can think, they are speaking to the whole world. But to me, it's a word to me personally. Please, are you with me? Are you with me? I don't know if you heard my story, how we started bridge ministries. Yeah. I was asleep and the Lord woke me up. Watch Voice of Inspiration. Ask Bishop Dan Carolina was supposed to preach. He said, Did I bring my friend Bishop TDJ? He comes to preach, and the message started to switch. Say, Some, Somebody, you are watching me. The Lord has asked you to start a church. You don't want to start a church. You still want to do fellowship. It's the same God who told Abraham to go and kill his son. And later asked him not to kill his son again, to leave him. God is asking you to start something. 
start. Ha! Ah, that was enough. Maybe you, you want. There's someone watching TV, your name, your name, you are called Clement, 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 Clement. And I can also see Asamwa, Asamwa. You go to a church, bridge ministry, you are trying to be a man of God. God has called you and say, hey, challenge me, I'll call for me. No, take your seat. Daniel was reading a book. What was Daniel doing? Reading a book. This is a prophet. He should have said, that the Lord spoke to me. I saw a vision. Daniel sees visions. Daniel hears from God. But I said, in the year of Nanado, in the second term of his reign, <laughs> I mention your name. I read a book. And the book said, may you have a prophecy. <laughs> Now, if that word was not a prophecy, well, Jesus said, if you don't believe me, believe me for the work's sake. <laughs> and out of it, I moved from Asalam down and went instead at Bawi. In year 2000, 2001. Today, the place is developed. It was bush. That's somebody who it's, it's, it's funny. Because from that place, that transition to that place, because I also heard a message by then what made me even believe that I should go to that bush apart from the fishing center was when uh, Reverend Isanda preached a message titled Learn to Hibernate and he said animals have not backslided human beings have backslided I know Reverend is true but he doesn't know me by face he didn't give me the prophecy but he said that when snakes and some animals know that the weather is going to change, they can eat and sleep for five years. Some can stay in water and can, some cannot stay in water. So those who cannot stay in water, they drink enough, they eat enough. He said, we human beings, because we have failed, we don't appreciate God and his grace. So we don't learn to keep certain things. Then he said, when life changes, change also. So he said, when your God is speaking to you and life change, you must intentionally, let's say you are the one who pick private, you pick dropping. Intentionally start picking trotro. Why? Because it's a season that you must hide. You don't want everybody to know you. So I said, okay, let me go to Malam, Bawi, and hide and let nobody know me. And know what that thing did to me. It took away what we call competition. Trying to be like everybody. Because when you are in town, it's very expensive. You must be joining prayer. And Reverend used to say something on Africa. He said, if you are in Accra and nobody calls you beautiful, he quote, I quote, go to Ocho Bompeso. You will miss Ocho Bompeso. And it's true. Do you know that? Do you know that when the way you are, if you go to a village, they will treat you as a village champion with all your makeup and all your dress. Hey, hey Charlie, Ghana, we feel but oh, wow, we feel chocolate. Is it true? But is it true? It's not true. You, they will look at you and say, hey, so, so he's like, move. Then I heard this man, this late man of God, also preached later, is dead. Christ apostolic. Um, he says something. He said, most people don't know that rich people like to go to the bush to where shrines are because they don't want anybody to know that they go there. So if you're a young pastor and you are in town, rich people don't come to your church. When you are in the lungu lungu, they think you are powerful, they will come there. And true, by the way, people will drive and come there. When we went to Awoshi here, yeah, the rich people stopped coming because when they park their car in front, people know that they are there and they don't know whether you succeed or you fail. So they can't identify with you now. But in the bush, they will come. Our house was always full with cars. People are coming for visual miracle. Why? So most of us, we are waiting for. 
am the Lord of snow and rain. The God who called your ancestor. Uh, please, God as he's speaking a baritone voice. <laughs> now we'll come back to this. Galatians 2, 2. I, Daniel, went up by revelations. I went up by what? I didn't you I went up by what? Now, so there is something Daniel found in the book of Daniel chapter 9 that we're reading. He said, I, Daniel, understood by the books. What did you understand? That Jeremiah had written that his people will be out of captivity by 70 years. He reads this, the next moment he says fasting and praying on. Wait a minute. Did God tell him to fast? No! And because of his work at the palace, he couldn't do dry fasting. So he decided to do coarse bread fasting. You know what is coarse bread? He goes to buy bread, and the bread becomes hard, so he takes bread and water for 21 days. That's all he was eating. And he was not creaming his body. So, fasting is depriving yourself of any food you want. So, Daniel was like, for then until I break through me, do watch it. And you know, some people can't live without food for a day. Is it true or is it not true? Like me, if you deprive me of tea for three days, tea, oh my, if I'm telling that tea, jai, 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 jai. But you know, you know, how many of you can't do without watch it for one week? Let me see. One week. Banku for three days. No, everybody has. So then I was like, I'm going to deprive of myself of things I normally enjoy to eat. So anytime he felt like eating, let's say, watching, it means go and pray. So he was exchanging his desire for another desire. He was emptying himself of what he naturally felt for, for what he felt for. Please, I'm not talking to somebody here at all. But you know something? Most of us don't really want any breakthrough. Even the one cry we say, I see in the spirit that God is doing, you don't do anything with it. How much more one from book? <laughs> I'll tell you this, that listen, a lot of the prophecies me I received God is my mother. nobody came to me to tell me a lot of prophecies I received I was reading the Bible and the thing hit me and said ah I can't do this I received and I lying and I said this is my prophecy and then I write on this day God gave me Isaiah 60 I write it down so back to Daniel chapter 2 Daniel I then understood by the books that my captivity is over by 70. There's a man of God who walked in divine healing. I've gotten his name. One day I'll get it for you. He was reading Acts 10 38. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who oppressed the devil and God. He was like, Hey, why should anybody be sick in church? That's his only problem. So he started praying for people, sick people, they go well. Nobody told him anything. He was just reading the Bible. Am I talking to somebody here at all? You know, a lot of us read the Bible like it's a history book. Even the books you have bought, they are history. <laughs> that is say. No. Is it Galatians 4.14? Let me check. Give me Galatians 4, 14. Let me see something. When, when your man of God is speaking and you think that it is he that is speaking, you won't go anywhere. 4, 14. I don't know whether it's 4, 14. If it is not, I'll recheck it. Okay. Let's read. And my trap, which was in my flesh, you did not despise or reject, but you received me as an angel of God, even as Jesus Christ. This is Paul talking. He said, they didn't look at the man of God in his trials. But they saw him as an angel of God and even as Jesus Christ himself who was speaking. You 
Because if you say, okay, this one is every Yali speaking. This one, it is God who is speaking. You will never get which is which. So, I came into church this evening. I said, God, give me a word. We hear this word, so Pastor, no preach you power. But I said, God should give you a word. The word you are going home today is with that you have read a book. The book has said something. Are you, are you here with me? Let me give you an example again. The late Archbishop Ben Sindahosa. He got born again, went to an Assemblies of God church. And the pastor preached that you shall raise the dead. In his name you shall raise the dead. After church, he went to the pastor and said, Pastor, you said Jesus said what? He said, we shall raise the dead. Then he told the pastor that no dead person has risen in this church. So yes, it will come gradually. He didn't talk. He went from house to house. Is there anybody dead here? Look for his book, find his book. Is there anybody dead here? Finally, they got to a house. They were crying. Somebody was dead. Say, thank God, bring the dead person. He said, what are you going to do? He said, read the Bible. He said, in my name, they shall raise the dead. Commanded the dead person to count in life. That is, in that house was where the wife Margaret Idahosa was. No locate, you know. He, 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 he just went around. And when he, he started moving, he got scholarship to go to um, a, um, Bible school in U.S. T.L.S. Osborne School. I've got the name, Christ for All Nations. When he got there, they were teaching normal can you run it him. He told the pastor that there's fire in his bones. They should bring him to Africa. When he got to Africa, all his pastors who came to meet him at the airport, they all fell down. People in the plane did not fall. The pilot did not fall. All the pastors. Then he called all the churches in the area that they should come together and form. For they said they won't come. He's nobody. He shouldn't come again. Then within a space of two years, the whole churches in this area collapsed. Everybody was coming to his church. Then the people came to him and asked him, now, what is your secret? You know what he told them? I grow grass. Go and grow grass. You know understand what it means, I grow grass. Do you understand that one too? The sheep only go to where the grass is. And they will go and eat. So I was telling them, like, you to go and grow your grass. The funny thing is that it was one, the pastor preached it. But the pastor didn't believe it. The pastor said, You can raise the dead. He didn't believe it. But he believed it. He asked the pastor, That is what Jesus said, right? Say so yes. He went around looking for the dead. What has the Bible said concerning you? Daniel understood by the books. So you are reading your Bible and you said through Christ he became poor that you might be rich. Then in case you say, ah, Christ became poor that I'll be rich. Why am I poor? It shouldn't be. And that makes you go crazy. That makes you go crazy. Why? Because you don't understand why you should be poor. When the scriptures say the, you know something that's happened to our generation? Please listen to me carefully. Satan has apostles and prophets whose only duty is to discredit men of God. Because when your credibility is taken away, then whatever you say becomes useless. Am I talking to somebody here at all? So, I've preached a message for the fight of faith. Any man of God, what they teach, the devil attacks it. So you have a powerful man of God like Bishop Dark. The son dies. The son was like, why is an healing man of God? Didn't he see? It is to, the devil will do everything to take that one day so that you yourself, when you are starting to pray for sick people, you say it doesn't work. This thing. You can, you can easily begin to doubt your own faith in God because of that thing. Anybody who preaches on holiness, the next thing they do is look for something to pull him down. Why? The devil looks for things to discredit you so that your faith in the thing will die. 
And guess what? That is why the man on the cross who could look at Jesus if you are the Messiah. Just bring yourself man. No answer there. The other one said, I believe in Jesus. Said, today. There's nobody that Jesus said today to. Who wants their salvation? Everyone said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> God so loved the Lord. You, can, you, can, you must be born again. But a guy who saw Jesus on the cross saying, my God, my God, why is that forsaking me? And he still said, you are the Messiah. Ha! When he said, you are the Messiah, he said, Jesus said, today, you shall be with me. In part, because the person who really believed him was the one who believed him during his trial moment. Not the one who believed him when things were working well. Because the devil will want to discredit the faith of people. Am I talking to somebody here at all? People don't believe so many things we say in church. I don't believe it. You don't believe it. Hello? Oh, hello. I can't hear you. Which revelation have you received so far? What revelation have you received? All the books you have read, which revelation have you received? All the books you have read. Almost all the fasting I did in my life, I didn't do it because there was trouble. I didn't do the fasting because a prophet told me something. I did because I came across some revelation. And I said that this must be mine. Like the first time I came across this scripture, Romans chapter 8. If that same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives in you, that spirit will quicken your mortal body. I said, Kai. And I asked myself, so the spirit that Jesus has, is it the same I have? Hey, if it is the same, then I cannot be sick. And that took me into fasting prayer. I wanted to make sure that that same spirit that was him is what was in me. That is the same spirit that he put Jesus in the tomb. Put a big stone there. And put eight or sixteen soldiers there so that God will not come out and on the third day this Holy Spirit remembered what Jesus said remove the stone and brought Jesus out I'm saying that if that same spirit is in me hey, that if you put my destiny under the sea if you put me in a grave and I tell the Holy Spirit that in three days I want to be out. I must be out. If I'm not out, there's no problem with God. I check the spirit I have. Oh, you understand, you understand me? So if it, I just go to God, say, God, please, is there anything wrong with the spirit I have? Then let's work it. We have read a new book that Gentiles will come to your light and kings will come to what? Your rising. Abi, a true or false? Do you know, how many of you believe that kings will come to your rising? Have you fasted on it? Have you spent on it and said, God, why is it only Zuku people are coming around me? I don't get it. I watched a movie and I cried in my head. A scout went everywhere looking for basketball player. I've forgotten the title of the movie. And went to Spain and found this guy who played basketball. The way the guy tormented the coach. See, the coach put his life on the line for this boy to become greater. I said, God, so can people also discover some of us? <laughs> Please, are you here with me? What the title of the movie? You two don't even know. Can somebody discover us? 
If he, then you are there and someone says, I, I like your pictures that you take. What cameras do you need? And the person will buy everything for you, build a studio for you, say, I'm going abroad. I'll come back in five years, collect my money. Hey! When he hear, I hear a man of God say he went to the U.S. to go and preach. When he finished preaching, take your seat. The, the pastor he went to preach for said, God said he should clear his account and give all the money to him. $10,000. Lord, the one I went to preach, I gave them money. <laughs> I'm not lying to you. See, you see, what I'm trying to say is that you can, you can go read the Bible, take it literally, and not pursue it. And as I come again, Matthew 18, 18, whatever you bind on earth is what is bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth is what is loose in heaven. So if nothing is happening in your heavens, it's because nothing is happening on earth. So Daniel and Asur Badabus went into fasting and prayer. You think I've forgotten. And on the 21st day, an angel appears from heaven and said, Daniel, the first day that you prayed, your prayer was answered. And when I was coming, the principality of your hometown arrested me. Heaven started responding. Was a man on earth was still working. And thank God Daniel didn't stop the prayer and the fasting. Because Daniel didn't competent this. But then you went into the 21st day and angel Gabriel came and said, I have come. Because God had to dispatch an angel because you kept persistent. The earth kept telling the heavens that I have not had the answer. I still need the answer. I still need the answer. So another angel was dispatched and then he, the angel said, I have to go back and continue the warfare so that you can have your deliverance. And what did the angel come to do? Mark it. The angel didn't bring deliverance. The angel brought information. It was information that the principality of Persia did not want Daniel to have. It was what? Information. It was what? I teach you this and I tell you that information determines your what? Change in what? Season. Information. Information. And I think I proved this to you before. Maybe you forgot it. First Kings 17. One. And Elijah the Tishbite of the Israel, as the Lord of God lives, therefore whom I stand today, there shall not be dew nor rain this years at my word. At my listen to this carefully. What is he saying? I say. It will not rain. I remember when we were doing this work, our brothers, the gang people came here and they were like, we should do some kusun, else the water here will come and flood us. I said, I won't do it. And I'm telling you, if it rains, when we are constructing this building, then I will do it. Not even rain. And it will rain on the whole area here, it won't rain. Now, I said, Pastor, how do you do it? You don't understand this thing. At my word, until um, the head of the early church, the head of the prayer department was called James. And James chapter 5, take me there. Give me the amplified version. It will show you that Elijah prayed that it will not rain. Before going to say that it will not rain. He didn't just come and say that it will not rain. Before he came to them and said it will not rain by my word, he had closed the heavens by his own prayer. Give me 17. Oh. No, give me Amplify if you have it. If you don't have it, give me New King James. And I like it. Elijah was a human being like us. Yes, what you You know, when we were young, we thought Elijah, Moses, Red Sea, and uh, Jerusalem was in heaven. How many of you also thought like that? He thought all those people were in heaven. They never existed on earth. Because when you hear the pastor preaching, God will open your Red Sea. I was like, okay. It's allegory. Allegory. But that thing was, it was Red Sea. So, let's read. Elijah was a human being with one, a nature such as we have. 
feelings, affections, uh-huh, and a constitution like ours. And he prayed endlessly for it not to rain. Read it. He prayed first that it should not rain. So before he came and said it will not rain, he had changed the spiritual realm on earth. You don't go decreeing and declaring when you have not prayed behind the scenes. Then they say, when your boss sacks you, go to your boss and tell him that, hey, you sack me. In three days, I'll get work. No, you don't do that. Before you speak, you have done your prayer background. You are shaking the heavens. Let's read. Elijah was with his nature such as we have, with what? Feelings, affections, and the life. And he prayed earnestly for it not to rain. And no rain fell on earth for three years and six months. Why did it happen like that? He prayed it. So back to First Kings 17. You see, they brought it as your reference point. At my word, except at my word. Now give him verse 2. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, after he has declared no, there will be no rain. Listen, any time the word of the Lord comes to you, it must change a season. No, you didn't hear me. You're, if you are still in your old season, then the word of the Lord did not come to you. It came to us. The word of the Lord must not be taken as a general word. It must be taken like my word. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, read next one, three. Get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the brook of Jeb, which flows into the Jordan. So God told him, go and hide by the brook of Jeb. I've commanded a raven to feed you there. Season change. So everybody in Israel was going to fetch water. If we don't, the king went to fetch water. Can you imagine that water was so scarce that the king can't say anybody because if he gets it, they will drink it. So the king goes to fetch water by himself. He and his servants go up here the bucket. But Elijah was comfortably by the brook. Wait a minute. Why didn't God show the other people where water was? But Elijah was, had a word where to go. Don't tell me Ghana is difficult. There is a business to do. There's work to do. There's a way to go. That whilst others are struggling, you'll be comfortably enjoying your life. Now, he said, I have commanded the rivers to feed you. In my book, Palace, I said, there's a place called there. There's a place called what? There. There's a place called what? Now, if God plants you in a place called there, don't let anybody move you from there. Because the raven doesn't come to your location. Doesn't come to your house. He comes to where God said be. Now do you know something about the raven? The raven is a carnivorous bird. It can't go and take meat and come and give it to you. It also takes meat. If a goat was to bring it fair, because goat don't you meat. And why did God use a bed because when the bed is flying in the air, nobody knows where the bed is carrying the spirit realm. Then the bed we, we, and come and put it there and give it to Elijah. Elijah will cook his meat and eat. I just were suffering. Elijah was enjoying. Now Elijah's own word has affected him. The Bible said, as we don't that the brook dried up. The river kept coming. Now let me tell you this: who has God commanded to give you something? And who when the Lord commanded the person to give you the thing, is the person finding you where you must be? Uh, it's going to rain, so it, I can't go to church. <laughs> huh. Now, if you read on, when the brook dried up, Another word of Lord came to him saying, Go to the widow 
Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. I told the Jews I'm thinking, so let me give you one. I was there, Pastor David sent me a message that the land you want to buy for our car park, the people called, sent a message that first they said they won't sell, that they are ready, we should come and buy. And I said, I called them. And I said, I want, oh, I said no, Pastor, don't come, we'll come to you. So they came to my office yesterday. Now, if I tell you how much one land is going for, you will marvel. But I'm not shaking because, you see, there's a place called there. <laughs> you see, when God gives you a word and you don't know what God's word entails, you will get frightened by the size of your congregation. If you look at the size of our congregation, this building, we shouldn't be building it. And how we take offering. When the Lord spoke to me years ago, Francis, look behind you as I buried my filling station. All the land there is for you. A young son of mine said he had a dream that I had built a mega church building in Nansuma. And I went to buy land in Nansuma. I'm still in court over that land. God never said I should go to Nansuma. Sometimes, be careful, I dreamed and I. No. Then, when we're about to buy here, a rich man came to me and told me that this place will be too small for you. See, I should go and ask the price. You will buy all the place for me. We went and ask the price. He was ready to sign and the Lord said, no, that is not there. And this place, what a log. When I come, came here, people laughed at me. But now, we have brought light to this neighborhood. If you stay long in this area, you will know that this place was a no-go area for anybody. Is it true? It's not true. And some of the people who used to laugh at us when we were, we were filling this place are now church members. And they confess. And tell us how they used to laugh at us when we are passing. But there's a place called there. There's a place called what? Now, listen to me carefully. When it came to the bed, God said, I've commanded a raven. A bed listens to God than human beings. When, listen, arise, go to Zion, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. I've commanded a widow to provide for you. When Elijah got there, the widow was going to cook the last and eat and forget the word. Who has been commanded? You see, that's what I talk about. Now, sometimes, if you don't move on time, based on God's leading, the people God has assigned to give you a break to do, give it to the wrong person. You see, human beings by nature, it's difficult to hear from God. The reason heard from God he was sending the bread. Elijah goes to the woman. Elijah goes to the woman's junction. Meet the woman, not the woman's house. The woman has moved from the house. Gathering sticks. And Elijah said, woman. He said, yes, prophet. What do I do? He said, I'm gathering sticks and go and cook cake. And me and my, my child will eat and die. God told me, he has commanded you to feed me. So how can you use your last for yourself? Okay. That is why when it comes to human being being God's vehicle, you must intercede for human beings because human beings will hear from God, they won't do. Not even more, don't mind the girlfriend. It's not true. I said it's not true. One day, God told somebody to give a phone to do God's work. The guy gave the phone to a girlfriend. 
And I saw the phone I saw in the vision with a girl. And the funny thing is that not too long, the girl messed up the phone. And the guy bought another one for the girl. And I wanted to go and ask the guy that guy. And I'm like, if I go and say this, you think that I'm rather we need brain no arm sound. I just kept quiet. <laughs> Praising the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> hey, look at her. Listen, no. Listen to her. She knows God. Oh, as the Lord, our God lives. I don't have bread or only a handful of flour in my bin. A little oil in a jar, and I see I'm gathering a couple of things, and I'm going and prepare for myself and my son that we may eat and die. You see the prophet. That God has said, I have commanded. Do you know something I realized about that? Most often, when even God speaks to people, that's when they pretend they have no head. They see they want confirmation. It's not true. They want what? Where are they in water? Verse 13. Is there a good teaching? Verse 13, please. Now, oh, I didn't ask. Then the prophet said, Bake. Then she said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said. Just say, Go and cook it. But make me a small cake from it first and bring it to me and after make some for yourself and your son if today a man of God looks at a widow and does this it will be on social media that a man of God is wicked because the Bible says take care of widows so the whole world God couldn't send this prophet to anybody than a widow Thank God the woman obeyed God. And when she did, she stayed on that meal throughout the season of the drought. Now, after the season of the drought, Elijah went to Elisha and God spoke to him that it is time for rain. So Elijah first kings go to tell 18, goes to tell Elisha. Sorry, Elijah, Elijah goes to tell Ahab that it's going to rain. I hear the sound of of the abundance of rain. He didn't say God said. He could hear that it's going to rain. A season of drought has changed to a season of abundance. But let me tell you this. The season of abundance doesn't come because you heard. It came about because you prayed it down. Heard the sound of patterns of rain. If it is me, oh, he told Ahab, pick your chariot and go home. Go ahead. But me and your, myself, we are going to pray. Wait a minute. If you want to change season, don't be FTC. Follow the crowd. Some people are not destiny changers. They don't make a difference in life. They don't care about anything. They are okay with their status quo. Elijah told Ahab, go with your chariot. Oh, we've gone past 17. We are in 18. Eighteen, nineteen. we are there. And when he went, Elijah knelt and began to pray. He prayed and prayed. And that's the servant. Go and see if it is, the rain is coming. The servant said, nothing is happening. Wait a minute. Matthew 18, 18 again. I quote it. Whatever you bind on earth is what heaven will do. You can hear heaven say, I will bless you. But if the earth does not give permission, that blessing will not come. Is anybody there to help head on this thing? Okay, let's move on. 
Elijah sent the person again. The servant. Two times. He said, I can't hear. I can't hear anything. I can't hear anything. I can't see anything. Listen, the fact that people don't see it doesn't mean you don't know it. The fact that others don't dream it doesn't mean you don't dream it. The fact that others don't expect it doesn't mean you should stop expecting it because some will not see it but they want to enjoy it. But you that the Lord has spoken to, that something good is about to happen to you, hold on, keep praying, keep trusting, keep believing, because if you keep it up, you will have your testimony. There is nothing, he said, seven times. The guy said, seven times, he said, there is nothing. Now, it is enough for everybody to give up. Then I didn't hear well. I didn't hear well. Most often, when things don't work, one, two, three, believers give up and say, it's, it's not going to work. I didn't hear well. Maybe it's a mistake. Daniel, 21 days, no message has come. Maybe this book is not something to be believed. I won't take it. But no. Then finally, he said, go and check again. And a son, let me tell you this. I like what the man of God did. He never went to check whether it was raining or the weather has changed. Because seeing is believing. If it goes, it will change what he's hearing. One day I heard a story by Catherine Coleman. And she said, Ben Hing gave the testimony about he was there. And a woman whose body was twisted. Catherine Kuman prayed and the woman's body shaped and he left the finger which was like this. And after the testimony, the woman said, man of, a woman of God, he forgot my little finger. And Catherine Kuman said, he left it there so that you remember that this is, was how you were. <laughs> God, is, God has a sense of humor. <laughs> he left your finger still like that so that you still remember that you were totally twisted. When he went, he said there was nothing. He said, go again. Some said, try it again. Then finally came and said, I see what I heard. Now I see the hand, the cloud in the heavens, but the hand of man. Then he said, come, let's go. Now a man of prayer who spent time in prayer runs faster than chariots move faster than education move faster than connections oh, you didn't hear me by the time it, whilst he was praying Ahab was on, in his Nizam patrol for, for V8 Prado presidential escort going to the Flagstaff house going. Before they arrived there, the man of prayer was there and said, King, you are welcome. How did you arrive before me? A person who prays heaven on earth can never be beaten in the race of life. Can I tell you this? Don't tell me you are seeing nothing. What have you heard? What have you read? What is God's word concerning you? The word of God will never return void until it has accomplished what it has been sent to do. What God has said concerning you is still lying in a spiritual realm. God is waiting for a man to pray it into being. Can we be on our feet? Pray to God and tell God that I'm still trusting you for what you have said concerning me. I want to bring my happiness on earth. I am making decisions on this earth. I'm rewriting my family history. I'm rewriting it. It doesn't look like the report I'm having from the servant says that there is no sign of rain. 
There is no sign of a miracle. But I know what I heard. Lift up your two hands. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm in my season for my open heavens. I believe your word just for me. And I believe this evening's word has been tailored for me. I believe that I am in my season of my open heavens. Right now, I decree on this earth, I cannot be poor. My God has supplied all my needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. And if that is the reason, I don't see why I should have a need. My God has supplied every need. I enforce this thing in my life. I enforce this thing in my life. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Lord God, you are my shepherd. I don't understand why there should be a want. You must make me to lie down in green pastures. You must lead me beside still waters. Restore my soul. Lead me in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. For your name's sake. For your name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it will not come near me because you are with me. Confirm your word with signs and wonders. Even in this season, the portals are opened for my blessing. I receive my portion and no one can take it from me. Angels are signed to bring forth my blessing. Make haste. Arrive quickly. I demand it. It is my portion in this land of the living. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Give the Lord a magic clap of friend. arrive quickly I demand it it is my portion in this land of the living in Jesus mighty name amen give the Lord a magic clap of friend let's take this announcement then Pastor David will come and um, take the offerings um, then we will Friday I'm meeting all church workers all departments if you are a quarry staff prayer warrior if you work in a department, you are a partner. If you work for God in the church, anything you sing, you preach, you, anything you do in church, I say we do nothing for God in this church. You, you are into outreach. Every, every part, Friday, 6.45, I'm having a meeting with all departments. God bless you. And look at some say, go and believe that our word is for you. Let me do this before you go. Put your hand on your chest or your put your right hand on your heart. I command sicknesses and diseases out of your body. Arrows thrown to somebody's back is removed. Pain in hearts are removed. Discomfort in bellies are taken away. Let your health spring forth speedily. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. 
Why don't you put your hands together for the father of the house? Amen.